In 1957, a Spanish farmer welcomed his fifth son into Bedrena, a tiny fishing village in Cantabria, Spain. But while he held the infant, little did he know he was holding a revolutionary. You see, the world of golf, especially European golf, had awaited the birth of Severiano Ballesteros for over half a century, and this is how that child fulfilled a prophecy. A simple royal beginning. Everything about Seve Ballesteros was mythical. His initiation into golf, his happy-go-lucky style of play, and a flair that put a golf club in Elvis Presley's regal hands. But way before Ballesteros became golf royalty, Spain's King Alfonso XIII had unintentionally laid the foundation for the genius of Pedrena when he decreed the creation of Real Golf de Pedrena. Interestingly, Seve's grandfather had given up part of his farmland for the golf club completed in 1928. Seve's father's farmhouse was also a short walk from the course, and this proximity allowed Ballesteros to sneak into the course and practice under the moonlight for many nights. He had to steal the practice hours because even though he started caddying at Real Golf de Pedrena at age 6, caddies were only allowed to play the course once a year. The limitation even forced him to create his own mini course somewhere in the hills for his daytime practice. But Seve's first course wasn't even covered in grass. He started on the most unusual terrain. Although golf wasn't popular in the rest of Spain, in Seve's corner of Cantabria, it was all they did for fun. So the little boy inevitably caught the golf bug, except his infection was beyond normal. One day, Manuel, Seve's elder brother, eight years his senior, got tired of seeing the boy constantly shooting stones around Pedrena's beaches with sticks. So he gave him the head of a three iron and Seve learned to fashion several short-lived shafts from sticks to complete his club. With this scrappy instrument, eight-year-old Seve learned and reinvented virtually every golf shot in the book. Still, Manuel, a budding golfer himself, wasn't Seve's only golfing hero in his family. The head pro at Real Golf de Pedrena at the time was his uncle, Ramon Sota, who finished sixth at the 1965 Masters. But even with this wealth of golf wisdom at his disposal, Seve didn't take lessons from the maestro or anyone else. He honed his tricks all by himself, and it wasn't long before he started showing off his stuff. At age 10, he was good enough to finish second in the club's caddy competition for his age grade. But two years later, he would get his first pair of golf shoes and finish as the champion with a 79. By then, he couldn't hide his talents anymore. So, against his mother's wishes, he dropped out of school to pursue golf full time. And what do you get when you mix obsession with ample time? Mastery. Seve's development shone through the next year when he scored 71-65 to beat the toughest group of caddies at the tournament. In return, he got unrestricted playing privileges on the royal course, and Manuel, who was already a tour professional, got a taste of the future as Seve beat him for the first time. Seve takes Europe and the rest of the world. For 13-year-old Seve, defeating a pro was all the encouragement he needed to become one himself, and after conquering several regional competitions, he was sure he was ready for the world. So, bankrolled by a doctor in Madrid, Seve bought his first full set of clubs and joined Manuel on the European tour in 1974 as a pro. He was bursting with confidence, so much so that he expected to win his very first tournament. But at the end of that Spanish Open, he hid in the locker room and cried as many 16-year-olds might do after a reality check. However, with the help of Manuel, who went from being his brother to becoming his de facto manager, Seve got better and closer to his goals. Two years later, the charming Spaniard arrived at the 1976 Open Championship at Birkdale with seven top tens and a seriously scary game. He was so good that only his immaturity could defeat him. After leading for three rounds, Seve thought he'd finished the job and hit a nightclub with Manuel on the eve of the final round. And either due to a hangover or the intoxication of the moment, he dropped a final round 74, allowing Johnny Miller to steal the claret jug with a 66 on that Sunday. Still, he finished in good company as he shared second place with the one and only Jack Nicklaus. But more than that, the youngster won many hearts and more media attention than Miller. He would later admit that it would have been too early to get such a victory, as he wasn't sure he could have handled that kind of pressure that early in his life. That finish was enough to ignite him as he claimed his first pro victory six weeks later at the Dutch Open. 
Then he closed the year with the first of many orders of merit as the European Tour's leading money winner. The next year, he continued his fierce form with seven trophies. And, just in case anyone thought it was a fluke, he added another seven the year after. At that rate, the world naturally became anxious for his crowning glory. He had to win one of golf's main events to be considered a serious contender in the League of Champions. At age 22, he was Europe's number one. So when the 1979 Open Championship commenced at Royal Lytham and St. Anne's, it's safe to say Seve was Europe's best chance. But just like the rest of his epic story, nothing happens in Seve's life without some drama. The Revolution Begins to take European golf into its future, Seve had to be special on multiple occasions. Most importantly, he had to beat the arrogant Americans, and there was no better place to start than on home soil. On that day at Litham, golf balls were going wherever the wind blew them. As a result, Hale Irwin, 1979's US Open winner, lost his lead to the elements with a 78. Jack Nicholas was also there, as usual, breathing down the neck of the victor as he finished tied with Ben Crenshaw in second place. But it was the dashing Spaniard in blue who took home the ultimate prize. And he almost didn't. Seve's drives off the tee were as wayward as a delinquent, but they were what made his game so enthralling. He made up for his poor driving with the best ball recovery ability golf has ever seen. He got into trouble a lot, but he was also the best at getting out of it. His unpredictable ball flights mixed with the wicked weather resulted in Seve hitting just 9 of 72 fairways. Still, he stayed in the chase even when better drivers fell apart. But it was what happened on his final round 16th hole that would define him to the world. While others were finding the rough, Seve took it further by getting his ball under a sedan in a temporary car park. Irwin thought the ball had gone out of bounds. Instead, Seve got a free drop and hit it 15 feet from the hole for a birdie opportunity. According to him, he'd planned that awkward shot that won him his first major, so he never accepted the enduring nickname of car park champion Irwin coined for him, as it suggested a bit of luck was involved. It isn't hard to believe Seve could have masterminded such a play considering the countless reels of magical golf he created throughout his career. He even has a plaque at crans sur cier commemorating one of them from the 1993 European Masters. If it was luck, Seve had plenty of it, but he needed only a sprinkle of it to win his first green jacket the next year. He loved playing at Augusta, so he wanted to win there more than anywhere else, and his mixture of will and skill ensured his victory. He was already the youngest winner of the Open in the 20th century, but winning the Masters was a more significant feat. No European had done it since the tournament began in 1934, mainly because the tournament only invited a few Europeans every year. Even in 1980, Seve was just one of four Europeans invited to Augusta, but his victory and the way he achieved it would change the status of European golf forever. He led by 10 shots on the last nine holes until the excitement overwhelmed him and reduced his final margin to four strokes. Still, he became the first European and youngest player to don the green jacket before Tiger Woods broke his record 17 years later. However, a grinning Seve in the iconic jacket was more than a young champion. He was a beacon of hope to the rest of Europe. And since he won it again in 1983, several Europeans, including three fellow Spaniards, Jose Maria Olazabal, Sergio Garcia, and John Rahm, have etched their names on the base of the clubhouse trophy. Seve, the leader of Europe. His personal achievements were enough to wake Europe to take its place in golf, but as was his nature, he took a more hands-on approach to repositioning Europe on golf's landscape. Initially, a fallout with the European Tour over appearance money kept him away from the 1981 Ryder Cup, where Europe took another drubbing. His first set of back issues also compounded his woes, but by 1983, he was back on good terms with his game. And when European Ryder Cup captain Tony Jacklin invited the ace to lead his side in the 1983 showdown, Seve proved to be the catalyst for a new era in Ryder Cup history. After nearly 50 years of total American domination, the Europeans almost upset the favorites, losing by one agonizing point. But with Ballesteros on their side, Team Europe's Avengers including Sir Nick Valdo, Bernard Longer, Ian Woosdom, and Sandy Lyle would change the energy of the Ryder Cup forever. 
They rebounded from that narrow loss in 1983 and beat the Americans for two straight Ryder Cups before forcing a tie in 1989. In all, Seve won five out of his nine Ryder Cup appearances, including a victory in 1997 as Europe's captain at the first Ryder Cup held in Spain. Most of Seve's 20 points from 37 matches came from his pairing with Jose Maria Olazabal. As Ryder Cup's most successful duo, they won 11 and halved two matches out of 15 four balls and foursomes. Ballesteros brought continental Europe into the Ryder Cup in 1979, and ever since, the Americans have lost their edge. Succeeding crops of European players have also continued the tradition of beating Team USA with Ballesteros as their spiritual mascot. Seve announced his retirement from golf on July 6, 2007, as his performance declined due to a recurring back injury and a loss of enthusiasm. In his latter days, he would design several golf courses and host the Seve Trophy, among other things. His 50 wins, including two Masters and three Opens, are the most in European Tour history, and his 87 total triumphs made him a worldwide golf champion. Sadly, Ballesteros developed a cancerous brain tumor, first discovered in 2008, and on May 7, 2011, the Wild Wizard found a hazard he couldn't outwit and passed away at his home in Pedrena, where it all began. If you enjoyed this video about how Seve Ballesteros revolutionized golf, check out the video on the screen now, or the one we posted below. We're sure you'll like that one too. Let us know in the comments if there's another golfer whose journey you'd like us to cover. See you there!